Hello and welcome to another process tutorial. So it's been a while with the process series. Um, the next one will be then, I think, maybe a beginner tutorial again. So, but in this kind of yeah little process tutorial, I want to talk about um, maybe attribute from map, so a specific input, color input, especially, and just some simple uh, point simulation. And I think with uh, these kind of um, yeah, specific in inputs with images or with um, paintings, uh, photography and so on, I think you can uh, create a really cool variety of renderings. So uh, it's pretty simple. I will show you the uh, build up, of course, and we'll start mm, up here. So first of all, I will place a line and I will uh, tell you something because I also did uh, one here but with lines and I think when you render it as a line specific uh, target or uh, geometry I think it will look really cool too especially the sides um, with the different color variations. Of course currently here the swell size is pretty it's pretty big but I think when you make it a little bit smaller you will get some extra detail and we can of course explore that together too so I will start with a line um, because I simply want to show you show you some um, basics and I will go for direction of x, y, z, so x1. So we will lay down flat the line in the x direction. And after that, a resample. And the resample node will resample our line. So if we have a look on our normal line, let's make that a little bit bigger. We got two points here. So we got basically point 0 and point 1. Um, let's We'll just make them a little bit bigger. Uh, where's the wire with yeah here the line a little bit a little bit bigger so you can see it hopefully a little bit better. So this is our line and this is um, point zero and point one and it's connected um, uh, between those two and with the resample we can clearly see that we will resample the line to more points. So instead of um, two points, we will get 11 points, so 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. The cool thing is, let me just go um, back here over to default. Um, the cool thing is what we can do, we can enable a curve view attribute on our line, and we can visualize that, just go to the resample node, go to the little information um, button and click on curfew and nothing will happen because I need to recook the note okay so we can basically see now a ramp from blue to white to red and this is an attribute that will sit on the points when we go to our geometry spreadsheet we can clearly see the curfew attribute is assigned uh, or computed on our points and it's basically from the value from 0 to 1. Now when we um, dial down the length here on the resample setting, for example 0 0.01, we will get a lot more points and a lot more um, values for the curfew of course because we got more points and now we can play with that curfew. And what I did here, let's just recreate that. That's pretty simple, but I think you can do a lot of uh, cool little style frames with that. Um, I'll just place a note to stay organized in pop for uh, the popnet. Let's just call it popnet. And we will place it on a popnet. And we will... Um, We'll just um, get the visualizer on and dive inside the popnet. And with the particle network here, 
Um, it's enabled by default when you go to the pop source. So basically your uh, input for the uh, particles and go on um, attributes. And then you can see a tab here or a line in inherit attributes. And we'll get a star. So the pop network will inherit every attribute that is available on the points. So we will also currently inherit the curfew. And what we can do now, for example, we can place it on a pop wind. So pop wind is basically a node that will simulate wind. And on the wind velocity, we can go on maybe 0 0.5 or 0 0.6. And on the amplitude, maybe 0 0.25. And we will just play that and you can see that we will inherit our curfew attribute and that's pretty neat because we can remap our values on that. So let me show you that. So when you go later into rendering, I'll just dial it up to three sub steps here. Um, when you go later into the rendering for example, um, you can then inherit the curfew attribute and play there with ramps. So we will do that also in a few minutes. But for now, for visualization, um, just place down a color node. And we can go from ramp from attribute and just select the curfew here. And now you can see we can uh, remap or um, basically reassign the values but currently with color. So we will currently influence the color attribute that's um, capital C and a small d. And now we can play with that. So that's pretty powerful. Um, you can of course try out here different uh, presets for example. But we can influence them. Another cool thing is um, what we can do. Let's go back here and I will mm, go on source and I will just use all points. I will go on the birth tab and impulse activation dollar ff equal equal one and that will um, tell basically the popnet hey uh, popnet just emit particles only on the first frame. So when we go back, you can see we will only emit one uh, line of uh, particles on the first frame. And when we will trail these uh, particles, so uh, placed on a trail node, we will trail them as a polygon. And disable the close rows here. The trail length, I will set the trail length to our end of the timeline, so $f uh, end. And when we re-enable our curfew, you can also see we got now our curfew attribute on here. So basically unramp from 0 to 1. But what we can do, we can just go in here and make another curfew. And I will choose another name, of course, for that. For example, curfew in the, the y direction. And the cool thing is, um, now you got basically um, two separated uh, curfew attributes. Oops, let's just yeah, you got uh, basically two curfew attributes. So you got one in that direction and one in that direction. So now you can remap also the other direction. So this is the direction from basically left to right, or maybe in, um, when you emit from a circle, around a circle. Um, and when we will enable that one, you can basically, or you will get um, the attribute curve u underscore y, and you then will remap um, this value. So you can play then, for example, in the rendering, um, with different masks or um, you can composite them together, for example. So that will uh, basically lead to my initial uh, thing here. 
I searched for just some uh, images, so this is by um, Caspar David Friedrich, a painting, and what I will do, I will scatter some points on here and place a popnet down. And in the popnet, again, all points, birth is set on dollar $FF equal equals 1, so only emit on the first frame. And a little pop went here. And when we will start this um, simulation, you will get really cool um, yeah, color ramps or fluid-like um, color behaviors. And when you bring that uh, then back into the render engine, I think that's uh, really uh, powerful. And here's another uh, yeah, uh, really nice picture I really like a lot. Um, that's from uh, Richard Moss. And when you then again, for example, displays this kind of image, but currently on here, I didn't choose um, the impulse activation with um, with all points. I just use points, and birth is on constant activation. So we will emit every frame points, and the constant birth rate is currently on 500,000 points. So then you will get something like that, and I think a close-up of that will look really cool too. Another thing, of course, um, what I did is that one over here, but just basically with the image. So again, um, only emit on first frame, all points, a little bit of pop wind, and then trail the whole thing. And uh, you can already tell, uh, <laughs> tell um, the trail is not so fast, but you will get really cool uh, results here. And of course you can um, get a curfew here also, and then use that again as a ramping function or as a remapping function in the render engine. Of course this is uh, currently a little bit maybe too organized here. Maybe go to 0 0.5 on the amplitude and the swirl size 0 0.75. Let's reset that and cook that again. And then you can just use um, different images or of course you can use a noise field, uh, use setup with whoops. So here we go, let's just resample that. Trail resample. Yeah, that's better. Um, and you can render that out, of course. Cool, so I think we will start with that one because I really like that, um, especially with the kind of bluish, um, bluish white tones here and then the other uh, color. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, let's place a null here. Again, just stay organized. Um, out, maybe PTS for points. And I will render it with uh, with Redshift. So currently um, we got a lot of attributes that we maybe don't need. Of course you can do a lot of cool things with these. Um, for example if we visualize the age. Um, mm, let's do it in another kind of way. We will do a top import. And I will rename the pop object to pop PTS maybe. I will copy the name, drag and drop the top network in here, object mask, your single and that one here. So we will just um, import our points through a top import node. That's pretty handy in my opinion. Um, and there's currently, for example, uh, currently is visualized the age attribute. And when you go on hide all attributes and show the age attribute, you can see we've got here the age attribute currently sitting on a value from around 1.7 seconds to really small amounts here, uh, 0 0.007. 
And of course you can remap that, so mm, maybe remap it to, uh, you can download uh, that uh, custom node on my Gumroad. Um, maybe you refit the age to a value between one, uh, 0 and 1. And then what you can do, again for example, um, use a color, so later in rendering a ramp, a ramp and go for the age here. And you can uh, basically then remap the age in combination with the color and play uh, with masks, uh, for example. Um, yeah, that is that. Let's pipe it. Let's just pipe it in here and don't remap the color because I want to use the color information um, in my render engine. So we got some depth and now you can see we've got a lot of um, attributes here. So you can just uh, go with an attribute delete and delete everything. Mm, detail attributes on that one, but except of mm, maybe the maybe the age. Whoops. Maybe the age. Um, and CD, so the uh, the color. So now we will uh, we got uh, three attributes left. Basically, of course, the position, the color, and the age. Now we can dive up one level. Um, I will just recolor that to black and make it round and call it um, Geo PTS for points. Of course, it will. Uh, it it will uh, recook here, so I will just recook it quickly, and after that, we can set up our um, rendering. So it recooked. Um, first of all, go to uh, if you render with, with uh, Redshift, go to Redshift OBJ on particles render object as particles and then global scale multiplayer. I will scale that a little bit down um, just to be sure and now we can set up our material network. So R as mat and our ROP network R as uh, out. I will dive inside here and place down a redshift custom and with the redshift uh, I will just replace it, uh, rename it as RS out uh, 001 and I will enable a few um, basic um, settings so global illumination on brute force and again just uh, simple automatic sampling and optics RT on supported GPUs so you can use your uh, RTX acceleration and then we need of course light so RS dome 001 color it's yellow because it's a light um, HDI maps I will just use a pretty simple uh, studio H um, HDI environment and a camera we need a camera so camera 001 and I will dive inside the camera lock the camera let's go and search for a cool maybe color transition Um, what I will do, I will just go down a little bit with the points here, so 150,000 for example, but I will simulate it a little bit longer, so we can yeah, get a little bit more uh, va uh, variety in our uh, particles. Of course you can then also play with, um, for example, a drag by a volume, you can do that too. Yeah, that's much better. And now we can start the render. So Redshift Render View. And 
and we will render our particles. Of course, um, we will not see any color currently. The particles are maybe, maybe a little bit too big, so just that. And I will zoom out a little bit here and get the edge, so we will got um, we will get the bluish and the white in the frame and then with the transition and a little bit more of these here um, of course the focus is yeah way off and what I will do I will just link the focus focus distance to the redshift COC radius maybe 0 0.1 and a bokeh image, bokeh image, that one here, mm. and we need of course a material, so R as material builder, R as mats uh, PTS for particles or points, I will dive inside, and the first thing I will do is get a color here, uh, an R as color user data, and link it to CD for color and link that to uh, just quickly to the surface so we can uh, be sure that our color will work and of course we need to apply the material so go on on a geometry node, select a, a geometry node, go from the previous tab to the rendering tab and then there are several methods again you can just choose the operator so like that or um, you can press shift W and just drag and drop the material on top or just uh, drag and drop it into the material slot and let's re-render that and now we can see some nice colors cool nice and now you can see um, of course our rendering uh, will need a little bit more resolution here and now you can see maybe the focus is a little bit let's go just on full HD currently um, our circle of confusion is, is maybe a little bit too high so I will go on 0 0.05 and our particles may be a little bit too small yeah I think that's uh, that's a little bit bigger or 0 0.75 that should be fine and now we can play of course with the camera um, a thing here for particles it's pretty hard to pick uh, sometimes focus here because you will need to get one particle but we can just go out and rearrange the focus manually yeah that's cool and you will get some pretty sweet colors here so that's the first one Another one we can try is of course, um, let's go back here, um, oh yeah, let's try, let's try that one here with the, um, with the bluish kind of color, let's, let's simulate that. Reset the simulation here quickly because I want maybe a f frame maybe 20, something in that range. 17, 18, yeah, maybe that one. And I will just copy the tree here. Um, of course, when you now apply that, um, you will import nothing because the network is called pop object, so we can just copy the name here and paste it in here 
and now you will import uh, your particles. Mm, currently, I think 500,000. Let's use um, 750,000 particles. And re simulate that. Of course, um, you can uh, use, for example, um, the scatter node you can use, but you can also use um, other method. You can just dial the resolution up here. So, for example, to 1800 rows and columns. And you will get yeah basically three million particles, so you can do that too. And then you can just on the um, on the source first input you can basically choose scatter onto surface, so you can do that too. So let's have a look on that one here. I will make a new camera. So we will not lose our first camera iteration. I think that will look pretty cool too. Let's have a look here. The other camera. And of course the focus is a little bit a little bit out. So let's rearrange the focus here. Yeah, that looks pretty cool too. What you can do, um, I think, what also is pretty good to do, you can randomize the p scale a little bit. So basically, you can do it um, with, uh, in a lot of ways, you can do it with vex. Get um, the wrangle here, and you just type f at p scale equals rand, and then brackets at pt num so we will use the point number as a seed multiply that by for example a channel float seed and then you got basically um, a p scale on your points um, that is between the range from 0 to 1 so now we got yeah and we will need a multiplier for that so we will multiply the whole thing times channel float, another channel float, and let's call that scale and create a, um, the parameter, maybe 0 0.1. Yeah, and now you can see you will get a different uh, a p scale. So that's uh, something you can do, um, of course, too. Of course, you can then fit the p-scale, because currently the p-scale is on range from um, 0 to 1. So you can uh, fit it, for example. So that is that one. And now, maybe we can do the lines here. lines but for the lines um, let's go a little bit maybe a little bit um, down on the resolution maybe 250 by 250 That will make it a little bit faster. So resample them um, to 5. And now again I want to basically um, delete the attributes or the unnecessary attributes. And what I want is the curve U and the color. Okay, that's good. Let's make another camera here.
And what is um, important here, we need to, ch of course you can do a, a point uh, uh, rendering, that's uh, fully up to you. Let's go to camera free. Will also look pretty cool because now the points are in a yeah in a order. They are pretty organized, so um, that will look uh, cool too. But if you don't want to render points, just disable that one here and enable the um, the strands. And on the cylinder, max titillation. I will disable that for now. And let's just start the render, and then you can render that out to um, two lines, basically. Yeah. So you got your lines here. So I think that's uh, pretty cool to do too. Of course, um, these are now pretty dense, and maybe you want to lower the overall um, the overall density on the scatter node, or make a, f a fewer points on your on your um, grid, so you will get. Uh, a small amount of um, uh, lines, so I can uh, control that a little bit better. I just forgot to uh, um, use um, the material, so of course now it will look uh, different. Maybe we can pump up the light here a little bit. And may maybe we can do that back again with the particles. Yeah, and o of course on that you will get um, a really organized... Let me just try to pick the focus here. No, let's just go back. Camera free. And I will lower again that a little bit, so you can play around with that too, of course. And I think it will look cool if you maybe include like an, an edge. Or, yeah, again, that's of course fully up to you. So I will go back one last time for that one here because I really like that. It's just pretty simple and it uh, will work good. So, I think that's it for now. Um, yeah, play with the input again play with uh, the popnet, so play with the simulation parameters, um, with the wind, axis force, um, pop it back by volumes, and so on. And yeah, if you want you can uh, send me some um, style frames you did, and I hope you will have a great day, and I hope you liked that tutorial, and I see you in the next one. Bye.